All right. There's a lot going on here, huh? So as we add a little bit more, running MRP, checking those reports, this is a lot. <laughs> so we'll watch the video here from ERP Sim, and we'll uh, I'll take some time to add in as necessary. So here's the final video. I'm going to let this one run all the way through, and then I'll talk a little bit afterwards. Let's recap. You must now manage the sales process as well as the procurement cycle. Try to balance your rate of sales with the frequency that you perform the procurement process. A key success factor to maximizing your profit is to ensure that you always have inventory available for sale. Remember, your customers will not accept back orders. At this point, we'll start the simulator and you are free to use the system and take actions as you see fit. At the end of the round, you will once again want to gauge how well you're doing and try to improve your performance. Having tried to balance your sales rate with your procurement cycle and with two rounds worth of reporting data to analyze, we're now in a position to consider adjusting our strategy. Now that you have a better feel for your customer markets and your supply chain characteristics, perhaps it's time for you to revisit your demand forecasts and change your replenishment levels. In essence, you should optimize the demand forecasts in the context of your replenishment cycle and supplier behavior. Perhaps certain products have higher demand than others. We could optimize our inventory levels and replenishment cycle to adjust for this. While there is no inventory holding cost in the simulation, it will be a key decision factor in the real world. Take a look at your job aid. These transactions can all be found to the left in the area marked planning process. Let's turn to SAP and learn how to change our demand forecasts. Transaction code MD61 is where you enter the independent requirements which are then used to execute the MRP process. We want to manage the forecasts for all our materials at the same time. They've been placed into a product group for this purpose. At the initial selection screen, choose the product group selection option and enter the product group. It is the same as your company code, your team letter repeated twice. At the planning table screen, you will see a schedule of months. Only the second column should have any values. Here you can adjust these from their current values. The simulation controls time, but as far as the SAP system is concerned, everything is happening on the same date, today. Do not use the other columns in this table. Only modify the values in the second column. And don't forget to save your changes. Let's recap. You must now manage the sales process as well as the procurement cycle and can adjust your replenishment strategy. This is the last round of the simulation. There is no penalty for having inventory at the end. Those products simply remain an asset on your balance sheet valued at cost. Take all you've learned and do your best. At this point, we will start the simulator and you're free to use the system and take action as you see fit. Good luck! All right, I'll, I'll actually hold off on starting the simulator. I want to go through what she just talked about. Uh, first thing, actually, I want to go and take a look at the results here on the viewer. You've probably already looked at them. So within these results here, so my rankings, I, I'm doing better than the no, Do Nothing team. <laughs> the, the Do Nothing team has literally started with 1,000 of each and has probably at this point sold out with all of all of them whereas I went through and kept reordering, so I have blown them away at this point. That's good. Um, my cumulative net income is 58919 Because they are out of inventory, I am taking all of their demand, and I'm taking the demand for my company. It's, it's all relative to how many teams there are, so I have far more demand. Your net income may not be this high. Uh, hopefully it's not negative, because the only way it could be negative is if you're selling below price or you have way too much marketing. Marketing, by the way, is cumulative. So this is my cumulative marketing. Uh, I didn't do any marketing in round two, so this is just the average of round one and round two coming together. So my round net income was 44914 and my round sales per team was 280000 And this is just Team Y uh, running out of all the rest of their inventory. At this point, I'm, I'm presuming they're out of inventory. So again, make sure you're watching this, and you can see... Team Y actually had their credit rating increase. <laughs> the Do Nothing team. They're looking great on paper. <laughs> uh, I, I'm looking better, of course. Okay, and looking at this, so we're going to go into round three. The only thing we're adding is the Create Forecast. So you need to replenish, and what we might want to do is look at the different options for replenishment. 
So your forecast is set right now for 1,000 of each one of these, and you probably have figured out that there are a couple of products that sell really well, and maybe you want to order more of those. You don't have to run MRP all the time. And there's probably some products that aren't selling at all. So we'll take a look at the reports, and we'll see. This is all on the planning side. So again, we were running MRP. It is material requirements planning, so it's in the planning process, but it was actually kind of required to get the procurement process in place. But really, we're in this section. So all of the transactions are now available. So it is MD61, and I will, whoop, hello, I'll split screen this one again and show you MD61. And you know what, I'm going to leave that there. I want to talk about my replenishment strategy so far. MD61, this is another one that if two people are trying to be in there at the same time, it will block you out. Why do I have nothing in here? Wow, that's terrible to have gotten all the way in this video and then this isn't showing up. Product group. <laughs> there you go. I just made a mistake for you that is going to really tell you what's going on here. So look what I did. I didn't do the instructions. Select product group and then dollar sign, dollar sign, dash B. ZZ dash B. You know what I did? ZZ dash F, which is for the manufacturing game. There it is. <laughs> these are the kinds of things that happen. I see students do them, and here it is. It's Don't feel bad if you make these kinds of mistakes. I just did it in front of you. I'm keeping this on the video. So you can see the mistake that I made. So here it is. So there's 1,000 of each one. And I'm going to open up my sales reports and I'm going to open up my inventory. I'll start with inventory. So got there. And I want a compact display because I have a number of different windows I'm going to have open. So just looking at this, just eyeballing it, uh, the spritz does not seem to be very, selling very well for me. Uh, forward slash O opens up a new window that's kind of like doing create session. And one should I, you know what? I'm actually going to open it up in a new window and go through the different options here. Because I'm not sure that I need the detailed and I don't have it memorized. So let's go in here and let's do ZVA05. So looking at this, this is what we're looking for. Now look at this. I'm doing lots of sales of Clear Pure, Clear Pure. This is on just day 20, I have Clear Pure going like crazy. Wow. So I have some lemon spritz going as well. My price is low. I'm the only person out there, so I have all of the demand, but it is definitely Clear Pure that I'm selling a lot of. That's interesting. Looking at day 19, I actually have a lot of lemon spritz and spritz. Not sure why that day would be any different. But it looks like I have a lot of clear pure. There are ways of manipulating all of this to get summaries uh, within all of these, or you can copy and paste within Excel to take a look at it too. So what I'm going to do, because I saw a lot of clear pure, is I'm going to do 20,000 here. And I'm going to take this down probably to 200, and maybe this one to 500, and I'm going to do the same thing. So the two different clear peers. This is, again, this is my strategy. You may do something different. There are no consequences if you make the wrong choice. So it is saved. Now what's going to happen is... ZZ-B, not F. <laughs> what's going to happen is, is I'm going to run MRP. And it's going to look at my inventory report. And it's going to order the difference. So I'm saying that I want... Where'd you go? I'm going to say that I want 20,000 of... Uh, this clear pure, so it's going to order the difference. I have 549, so it'll order whatever that is, 19,451 of uh, the one liter clear pure. Again, the difference for this one as well. But look at this, the spritz. I'm telling it I want 200, and I have 200 in stock. Or I have 200, saying I want 200, and I have 909 in stock and 899 in stock. It's just not going to order anything. And same with lemon spritz. I put it at 500 and 500. Until this drops below 500, it's not going to order anything. So what we're going to find is, is when I run an MRP, it's only going to order the clear peers, the one liter and half liter clear peers. 
So let's go ahead and do that. I'll run MD01, MRP, M oop, ME59N, execute. And sure enough, it's only two products that were purchased. And we can go into those if we wanted to, wanted to but we don't need to. And then I'm going to look at go purchase order tracking. So I just ordered those. So we'll see. It's one liter of clear pure. It's the difference, uh, the quantity. It's the difference between what I had in stock and what I wanted. Not scheduled. And just to take this time to look through and see my replenishment. <laughs> So I did a lot of running of MRP during round two. And uh, just eyeballing this, you can see a lot of it was the clear pure. So what this will end up doing is uh, once I've raised the quantity that I'm wanting to order for clear pure, uh, I shouldn't have to run MRP as often. Now there, I am. I just threw in 20,000. What I really should be doing is looking at the sales report and seeing exactly how much I sold within the round and adjusting my forecast to match that or come close to it. So I've run MRP and uh, I've looked at all my financials and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start the simulation. At the end of this, uh, this is the last video for it. So at the end of it, uh, we're, we're really just getting some experience with SAP. Don't feel like you have to do anything else at the end. Just log off. I'll shut it all down. And uh, the next week is working on the labs and those will be available very shortly after the class. So I hope you enjoyed the distribution game, and we will uh, meet back up in a couple of weeks to do the manufacturing game. There will be some videos for the lab coming up for the next couple of weeks.